In the last video, I announced I'll be making a mini arcade machine for my next game project. Well, I picked up most of the parts, so let's get started. Hadouken! Hey guys, my name is Tahid. I'm an indie part-time game developer, mostly using Unity. And just letting you guys know, this build is going to take maybe two or three videos, depending on how many upgrades I want to do. So, the parts I'll need are the iCade arcade cabinet, a Raspberry Pi 4, a micro SD card with a card reader, a speaker board, a set of speakers, a zero delay USB encoder, a USB-C power supply, and a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. If any of you guys want to follow along, I've left links to all the parts in the description. I'm also going to need a spare mouse and keyboard, a spare monitor to set up the Raspberry Pi, a Phillips screwdriver, an electric screwdriver, a 3mm Allen screw screwdriver bit, and some flush cards. So I start by removing the Allen key screws on the front and bottom of the IK. Remove all the Phillips screws from the bottom of the control panel so I can install the zero delay USB encoder. Now that the panel's off, I remove all the plugs connecting the joystick and buttons to the old encoder and remove it. Before I can install the new encoder, I remove the old battery compartment using some flush cutters to make space for the larger encoder. Honestly, if I had a Dremel, this part would have been way easier. Eventually, I get it removed and cover up the hole with the battery cover. I now screw in the zero delay encoder where the battery compartment used to be. Again, if I had a drill to hand, this part would have been way easier. Next time I'll keep all my power tools to hand just in case. The encoder is finally in and I realised that the connectors on the buttons are different to the ones on the board. So I start swapping out all the cables with the new ones. Start plugging in the joystick controls, making sure to match up the directions with the allocated directions on the board and wire up all the buttons in order from 1 to 8.
Lastly, I plug in the USB cable so that I can plug the control panel directly into the pipe. Done. Now on to testing. Because I still haven't set up the Raspberry Pi, I tested the control panel on my PC. I connected the USB cable and it showed up as a generic USB joystick. So I clicked on the properties and made sure all the buttons were working properly and were set up in the right order. To install RetroPi on the Raspberry Pi, I installed two programs. SD card formatter to make sure the SD card was ready to have a new operating system installed and Raspberry Pi imager to flash a new operating system onto the card. I've left links to download the programs in case you guys need them. After formatting the card, I run Raspberry Pi imager and installed the latest version of RetroPi for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now that the SD card's ready, let's set up the Raspberry Pi. I start by installing the speaker board onto the Pi and plugging in the speakers. I still haven't installed the software to get the speakers working, but I'll definitely get that done before the end of the video. I install the SD card, plug in the IK, the USB dongle for the mouse and keyboard, a micro HDMI cable, and finally the USB-C power plug. So I restarted the Pi so that I could set up the UI controls. Now to set up Retro Pi, I go to the Raspi config option. Because I want to connect the Pi to the internet and transfer ROMs wirelessly, I need to set up the wireless LAN country to Britain. I set up a password so I don't get hacked and enable SSH so that I can transfer the ROMs across the network. I restart the Raspberry Pi and set up the Wi-Fi. I tried to censor as much sensitive information as I could, but if any of you guys noticed anything that shouldn't be public, definitely let me know in the comments. Now that the Wi-Fi is set up, I get the IP address, so let's jump back onto the PC to transfer some ROM. To access the Raspberry Pi, I open up File Manager and type in backslash backslash, then the IP address, and I get access to a couple of folders. I open up the ROMs folder, then Arcade, and move some games across. Now I restart the Raspberry Pi, and the new Arcade option should show up on RetroPi. Now, onto the final step. To set up the installed soundboard, I exit RetroPi by pressing the star and quit emulation station. Then I type in the following command to install the software. I get a couple of prompts to install the software and optimize the settings and restart the Pi.
Now it's finally time to play my first game and make sure all the buttons and sounds are working right. So that was part one of the mini arcade build. In the next part, I'll be building housing for the screen and the speakers, and I'll be mounting all of the parts onto the back of the arcade. If you're looking forward to the next part of the build, definitely subscribe so that you get notified when it comes out. Also, since you made it to the end of the video, why not check out my famous rep video on how to be consistent. Cheers guys.